evening and welcome. My name is Dan Potvin. I am the Director of Donor Relations at the Companions of the Cross and it is my great pleasure to welcome you all here this evening for this Mass, this celebration of our seminarians' commitments. Many of you knew Father Bob. Uh, likely almost every, all of you have heard of Father Bob. Father Bob had a vision for the church. He said, and I quote, I love the church. I call it the sleeping giant. Once we begin to rediscover what it means to evangelize and to undertake a large-scale renewal of this ministry, I see the church waking up and coming explosively alive to the point where it, with the power of the Holy Spirit, will shake the earth and the nations with its dynamic presence." End quote. Three months ago, on Pentecost Sunday, the Companions of the Cross launched a new campaign, a movement, really, a movement to wake up the church. We have appropriately called this campaign the Church Explosively Alive. Father Bob believed that if we would just give God permission, we would see God take action and provide the power for great renewal in the church like never seen before. And another quote from Father Bob. I love Father Bob quotes. Father Bob said, as throughout history, when God wants to affect change, he looks around for some people who are willing to do whatever he says. To those he finds, he gives a vision, a way to make changes. We believe we've caught something of what God is saying to the church about the priesthood in our day. We're trying to live it out. That's why he's sending the men." End quote. Before we begin Mass, I'd like to share with you a very short film. It's about four and a half minutes, entitled, He's Sending the Men. And tonight, we, we, we will all have an opportunity to bear witness to the fact that God is indeed sending the men. So sit back and enjoy. Let's roll the film. Thank you. At present, we have seen the growth in our community to the point now we have 38 priests and two bishops, men who have been pulled out of our community because they've been appointed as bishops, which is an incredible affirmation. And we have currently 20 seminarians what we've noticed every year is the vast majority of our, our financial donations and resources are going to the training, the education, the formation, the housing of our seminarians because the Lord is giving us men. He's sending us men. So that's, uh, that to me is so hopeful to see the kind of vocations that God is bringing to us every year. It really because they see a community thriving. There's something special about us in a sense, and that really draws young men. And so, in a sense, it makes my life much easier as vocation director because there's something there that they're, they're drawn to. I don't have to, I don't have to create something. They're, they're drawn to the charism of the companion. the charism of the companions. When I think of future ministry, I think of renewal. I think of revival. I think of healing. I think of transformation. I just, I just want to see what I've already seen God do in my life and in my, in my ministry now. It's transforming the heart of men, transforming the hearts of families. 
bringing not just conversion to, to, to the Catholic faith, but bringing healing to the world. And that's what I think of when I, when I think of my life in the future and what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of my life. I remember this one day, I was really struggling with whether or not I should leave seminary because I was wrestling with this thought that I am just not worthy of becoming a priest. Like, who am I, Isaac, to think that I can become one of God's priests? Like, the audacity of it, it kind of scared me. And as I was reading in the Bible later in that prayer time, there was this scene of this priest who was brought into God's presence in a, in a vision, and he was covered in these filthy rags. And the devil was standing beside this priest, accusing him before God, you know, accusing him because those rags represented his sins. But, the, but then God basically rebukes the devil and sends the devil like, get out of here. And an angel comes and dresses this man in priestly robes and he puts the priestly clothing on him. And I was just crying in the chapel because the Lord was showing me that I had given him permission to do whatever he wanted to do with my life, like Father Bob told me to do. And he was going to supply all of the grace that I needed to be able to become the priest that he wanted me to be. I did a, an internship at St. Benedict Parish out in Halifax. Um, that for me is probably the closest example of an explosively alive church that I've seen thus far. People there are having powerful experiences. People there are, are going to church, not because they have to, not because for a very personal reason. Uh, they've encountered the Lord and they come to encounter the Lord ongoingly. I, I think there are some, some people out there in the church, maybe even some of the leaders in the church who probably think this isn't possible. You know, we're just gonna stay where we're at and, and maintain it. I live with the guys who are on fire for this, who want this to, to actually happen, who are, who are gonna put their lives down for this to happen. I think that's, that's the foundation of my hope that when, once we become priests, we're going out there and we're going to do all we can to make it happen. Just as Father Bob was able to fill the church to capacity by surrendering to God, by leaving everything into his hands, I desire to bring the same thing, to bring the spirit of Father Bob back and back not only in one church, but in many churches and all the churches in the world. I desire to have the spirit of Father Bob so we can achieve the great vision that he had for the church, that he still has for the church, that I have for the church.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. It's great to see all of you come out tonight to celebrate with our community this mass of commitment of our seminarians, and to celebrate with the priests, almost all of the priests, or many of the priests of the Companions of the Cross who are here tonight. It's great to see my brother priests and to be with us and our seminarians tonight. And also, we have a brand new, newly ordained transitional deacon. Deacon Dan, we welcome you too here tonight. <laughs> Dan was just ordained to the uh, transitional diaconate in his hometown of Vancouver by Bishop Scott McCaig, our, one of our own bishops, and uh, I was happy to be there with Father Bernard to witness that great ordination. Tonight also we want to honor, there's four priests here celebrating significant anniversaries. Uh, the homilist tonight will be Father Mark Soren celebrating 25 years. The next priest, there's two priests celebrating uh, 20 years, but I don't know if you know them. One is called Tim Devine. Have you ever heard of <laughs> And Father Mark Goring as well, Saint Pastor of St. Mary's. And finally, celebrating 10 years of anniversary, a priest who's no stranger here at St. Morris, Father Lawrence Hygienist, 10 years. And we do have a priest in our community celebrating his golden jubilee, but due to health uh, issues, he wasn't able to be with us this year, Father Ed Wade in Houston, Texas. 50 years of priesthood this year. So we have much to give thanks for, much to be grateful for to the Lord. And let us just pray that he's going to truly bless us tonight, pour out his grace and mercy upon us, pour out his Holy Spirit, because we want to see the church become explosively alive, as, as I hope you enjoyed that, that video, even with the technical difficulties. Uh, so brothers and sisters, uh, in order to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who willed that St. John the Baptist should go ahead of your Son, both in his birth and in his death, grant that as he died a martyr for truth and justice, we too may fight hard for the confession of what you teach. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Gird up your loins, stand up, and tell the people everything that I command you. Do not break down before them, or I will break you before them. And I, for my part, have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar and a bronze wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its princes, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. The word of the Lord. deliver me and rescue me incline your ear to me and save me my mouth will tell oh Lord of your deeds of salvation be to me a rock of refuge a strong fortress to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked. My mouth will tell, O oh Lord, of your deeds of salvation. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope and my trust. From my youth, upon you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My mouth will tell, O oh Lord, of your saints of salvation. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts of your deeds of salvation all day long. Oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth will tell, O oh Lord, of your 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that John was a righteous and holy man and he protected him. When Herod heard John, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask for me whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. The soldier went and beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took John's body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sit back and relax. No, don't worry, it's a little bit. Don't you just love this, this wonderful Ontario weather? Yes, embrace it. So, when we look at John the Baptist, we look at someone who wants to do God's will no matter what. Right? That's how he lost his head. That's how he's martyred, because he wanted to do God's will no matter what. That's hard. That's a hard road to follow. That's a hard thing to, to use in an example, right? is to do God's will no matter what. But that's what we're called to do, is to do God's will no matter what, to embrace it. No matter what comes our way, to give him thanks, to bless him. I have two examples. One where I was able to give him thanks and bless him, 
and the other one was today when I was just very frustrated. <laughs> so let's start with the, the frustrated one. All right? So if you notice, I'm wearing black shoes and black pants, and that's thanks to Father Jerry Overo. Because I stopped at a gas station today to fill up a couple coolers because I bought some stuff from Costco and I got some ice and the, the garment bag was in the way so I put it on top of my car. You know where this is going, right? And um, I drove away. And when I got to the hotel, I realized that I left my garment bag on the car. And so I'm taking stuff out of the car, I realize, and my frustration goes from zero to 95, right? Frustration with myself, and like, what am I gonna wear now? And I go into the room, and Father, before Father Jerry was there, and, and I told him, and da 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 and then I got out, and I thought, okay, I gotta go buy myself a jacket and pants, and, um, and because of my special figure, I can't just buy pants where the waist fits and the legs do, do as well. They have to, so I decided, okay, I'm not gonna go to big and tall, and it's not because I'm tall, um, <laughs> to get some pants and a suit, right? J.P. Bolger, you're laughing too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, father J.P. <laughs> Anyways, so I decided, you know what? I'm gonna buy a pair of black shoes so at least I have something black. And then I Googled this, whatever it was, the shoe store, whatever the heck it was, and it was like, gonna take me 27 minutes to get there. And I said, forget it. I, at this point, had calmed down a little bit, and I was able to finally say, forget it, it's okay. I will wear my dude shoes. That's what they're called, dude shoes, very comfortable. Cotton pants, a light shirt, I don't have to worry about, oh, it's a short sleeve anyways. <laughs> um, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll be a little bit more comfortable than everybody else in the sanctuary. <laughs> but then Father Jerry said, he had suggested, well, why don't you go to the gas station where you were? And I said, no, no, I'm just, I'm frustrated. I'm not doing that. I'm going to have a nap. And, um, and then he texted me. He went to the gas station. So Father Jerry, it's your fault. I'm dying from heat up here. <laughs> But I am very grateful, I am very grateful, <laughs> right? And so, did I embrace that moment? No, I didn't. I didn't say, okay, Lord, all right, that's, that's fine. Um, we'll deal with it somehow. I'll get something different. And, but I didn't do that. I let frustration take over. The second story is I was at... Um, Holy Trinity at St. Jean Vianney, uh, at the Holy Trinity, at the, the three parishes there, or the three uh, churches that were there. Um, and during that time, one of my nephews died, Kyle. It was a senseless death. He got into a fight, and he ended up with uh, being brain dead. And eventually they had to take him off the respirator. But at that point, there was a tremendous grace. The grace was to embrace God. I wasn't going to get an answer of why. And so I had to embrace him and praise him. Not because my nephew died, but because he was with Kyle. And because he's with Kyle's family with my brother and his wife, with our family, with my mom, with me. And God used that death to show me that my love for him was stronger than what I thought it was. To praise him for being there with us. Brothers and sisters, we struggle. Is there anyone who hasn't struggled? You're not going to put up your hand, Father John Paul? <laughs> We've all struggled. Even as children, there were struggles. Right? Do you remember when your kids went to the, the wonderful no's, the wonderful twos? No, no, I learned the word. No, no. <laughs> right? And so they struggled in finding their way. 
The thing is, is God is with us in every struggle that we go through. No matter how small, how insignificant, or how huge and big and overwhelming it can be. God wants us to move into him or to invite him to move into us. To embrace us. To hold us. And when times are uncertain, he wants us to do the same. And when we can't do it on our own, we have brothers and sisters that we can do it with. I shared my thing about my suit with Father Jerry. And I wasn't in a place to hear God, to go back. <laughs> Father Jerry was. God uses our brothers and sisters in our lives. But sometimes we want to isolate ourselves. And sometimes we can't help but to isolate ourselves. And that's where we offer that up to God as a sacrifice of prayer. As a sacrifice of praise. We're not praising him for the struggle we're having. We're praising because he's with us in this struggle. And it's so important as Christians, especially in today's world, to do that. Secular society is taking over more and more and more. Do we complain or do we pray? Sometimes we do a little of both. <laughs> but the praying should outweigh the complaining. When was the last time that you prayed or that I prayed for our government leaders? in a way of, Lord, I give them to you. Not, Lord, I want you to tell so-and-so A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then the church, or then the Canada will be doing really good. I'm not God, are you? Is anybody God here? None of us are. God is God, and we need to turn to him. And it's a lifetime process. It doesn't all of a sudden get wonderful. Poof! All the problems are gone. Sometimes the problems get more difficult. And again, push in to God. Yes, sometimes we'll be persecuted for it. But we have to love. We have to love those who love us. And just those who love us, right? No, we need to love those who hate us. <coughs> Excuse me. John the Baptist wasn't getting after Herod because he hated him. It's because he wanted to convert him. He wanted him to see his errors and turn away from it so that he too could be saved. Jesus didn't run away in the garden of Gethsemane. He didn't say, oh, here they come. I'm getting out of here. I know there's a side door over here somewhere. He embraced it. Yes, he was God, but he was also fully human, setting an example for us to embrace, to embrace our trials, to embrace those who, who hate us, to embrace those who think we're crazy. I've got a brother who's an atheist, my oldest brother, and he thinks we're crazy. Okay, I'd rather be crazy for Jesus than nothing else. But God opens up things where you can speak, where I can speak to him and get him thinking. But I can't just turn away from my brother because he thinks I'm nuts. I remember when I first joined the seminary, he says, oh, this is just, this is a phase. It's a phase. After a couple years, oh, Mark's in a phase. He's in a phase. Oh, yeah, I quit my job and joined NET. I was in a phase. That was the first phase. And then when I got ordained, I said, 
Am I still in a phase? <laughs> but hopefully my witness and the witness of some of my brothers and sisters will be an example to him. I cannot save my brother. Only God can do that. But I'm never going to give up on praying for my brother. Because God can work miracles. God can work miracles. He is. He is the originator of miracles. And he loves you. He even loves you guys. <laughs> and he even loves me. So let us turn to him in all of our trials, in all of our good times. And when it's too hard to carry by ourselves, we call upon him. We call upon Our Lady to help us. We call upon the souls in purgatory. We offer up. Don't forget, we're supposed to be praying for the souls in purgatory. There's some people think that purgatory is gone. Where to go? It's always been there. It's a place of atonement. When you need a real miracle, pray for the souls in purgatory, those in most need, then ask them to pray for your need. There's the suffering church. There's the, the glorified church, the triumphant church. And I forget what we are. <laughs> what is it? The militant church. <laughs> I'm old, okay? I'm old. Cut me a break. So may the Lord just bless you and set his angels guard over you. And during the difficult times, may you remember to turn to him. In the good times, may you remember to turn to him and give him praise and thanks. And may he bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may remain seated now as we continue with the rite of commitment of our seminarians. Bless these crosses, O Lord Jesus Christ, for by your cross you conquered the domain of sin and death and reconciled us to the Father. Let them be bulwarks of faith, encouragement to do good works. May they be consolations, protections, and shields against the darts of the enemy. May our brothers who receive these crosses become true companions of your holy cross, fully Catholic imbued with evangelical hearts and filled with Pentecostal fire. May they receive bountiful grace from you, O Lord, to persevere and prosper in their commitments. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. With those brothers who are to make their first temporary commitments, please come forward. Gabriel Gautier. What do you ask of God and his holy church? I ask for God's abundant mercy upon my soul and for the grace to begin temporary membership in the Society of the Companions of the Cross. You are about to begin temporary membership in the Companions of the Cross. As you are aware, this period of your formation carries with it a serious commitment in the form of a promise to follow the con constitutions and rules of our society. It is a time for growth in holiness and fraternal love in community life. You are to take as your model the most blessed Virgin Mary, the first companion of the cross, and to keep always before your eyes Christ crucified, who is the wisdom of God and the power of God. You may now make your promise. I, Gabriel Gautier, 
relying upon the grace of God, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the support of my brothers, freely make this promise before you, Father Roger Vandenacker, to follow the constitutions and rules of the Companions of the Cross for the period of one year, for the greater glory of Christ and his holy cross. In the name of the Companions of the Cross, I receive your promise. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion. Achipe crucem. Deo gracias. Receive the constitutions and rules of the Companions of the Cross by observing them faithfully under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. May you attain the perfection of charity. Amen. Amen. George Liberio. George, what do you ask of God and of his holy church? I ask for God's abundance and mercy upon my soul and for the grace to begin temporary membership in the Society of the Companions of the Cross. You are about to begin temporary membership in the Companions of the Cross. As you are aware, this period of your formation carries with it a serious commitment in the form of a promise to follow the constitutions and rules of our society. It is a time for growth and holiness and fraternal love and community life. You are to take as your model the most blessed Virgin Mary, the first companion of the cross, and to keep always before your eyes Christ crucified, who is the wisdom of God and the power of God. You may now make your promise. I, George Liberio, relying upon the grace of God, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the support of my brothers, freely promised before you, Father Roger Vandenacker, to follow the constitutions and rules of the Companions of the Cross for the period of one year, for the greater glory of Christ and his Holy Cross. In the name of the Companions of the Cross, I receive your promise. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion. Achipe crucem. Deo gracias. Receive the constitutions and rules of the Companions of the Cross by observing them faithfully under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. May you attain the perfection of charity. Amen. Peace. Lita Amarasinga. Dulitha, what do you ask of God and his holy church? I ask for God's abundant mercy upon my soul and for the grace to begin temporary membership in the Society of the Companions of the Cross. You are about to begin temporary membership in the Companions of the Cross. As you are aware, this period of your formation carries with it a serious commitment in the form of a promise to follow the constitutions and rules of our society. It is a time for growth and holiness and fraternal love and community life. You are to take as your model the most blessed Virgin Mary, the first companion of the cross, and to keep always before your eyes Christ crucified, who is the wisdom of God and the power of God. You may now make your promise. I, Dulita Amara Singha, relying upon the grace of God, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the support of my brothers, freely promised before you, Father Roger Vandenacker, to follow the constitutions and rules of the Companions of the Cross for the period of one year for the greater glory of Christ and his Holy Cross. May God, in the name of the Companions of the Cross, I receive your promise. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion. Achipe crucem. Dio gracias.
Receive the constitutions and rules of the companions of the cross by observing them faithfully under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. May you attain the perfection of charity. Peace. So now I'll invite all the brothers in members of the Companions of the Cross to come forward and we'll process and we'll welcome our new brothers to our community. That have just made this promise. Would those brothers who are to renew their temporary commitments please come forward. Michael Hoyanopoulos, Manus Kurana, Sebastian Mugridge, Carl Hartman, John Brundage, Matt Marin, Timothy Silver, Edanditha Amarasinga,
one year for the greater glory of Christ and his holy cross. Acipite crucem. In the name of the Companions of the Cross, I receive your promises. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion. O Christ, crucified power and wisdom of God, through the triumph of your cross and the prayers of your Holy Mother, first Companion of the Cross, may these, our brothers, generously serve to spread your kingdom, bring you perfect glory, and be received by you into the reward of life everlasting. Amen. 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 Congratulations. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and the bishops under whom we serve, for strength and guidance in their ministry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of all peoples and nations, particularly those to whom God sends us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, the companions of the cross, especially for those brothers who have made commitments today and those celebrating the anniversary of their priestly ordination, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may grow deeper in love with Christ and His Holy Cross, and persevere in the commitments we have made. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our generous benefactors who support us in so many ways, may God richly bless those who have blessed us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother companions and associates who are sick or who have died, may God's hand of mercy rest upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, hear these prayers and all the other personal intentions we carry in our hearts. For we offer them to you with great faith and confidence through Christ our Lord. Come to the rock. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through these offerings which we bring you, O Lord, grant that we may make straight your paths, as taught by that voice crying in the desert, Saint John the Baptist who powerfully sealed his teaching by the shedding of his blood through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you have consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing, even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim holy fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith, save, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, Ivan, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. John the Baptist, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Amen. Peace be with you. It's hot. <laughs>
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Open up my eyes in wonder 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, as we celebrate the heavenly birth of St. John the Baptist, that we may revere what it signifies, the saving sacrament we have received, and even more rejoice at its clear effects in us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just a few announcements. I'd like to uh, invite all of you, if you're able to stay, to gather with us downstairs for a reception in the hall. And I want to acknowledge at this time, too, that not only is God raising up a new community of priests here in Ottawa, but also two new communities of sisters, our own sister community, the Servants of the Cross, and the Queenship of Mary. And we want to welcome these sisters here tonight as well. And I also noticed Sister Alice Johnson there in the second row. How old are you now, sister? 97? <laughs> She's been a sister for over 70 years. She's right in the second row here. <laughs> Great to see you serving the Lord still. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
the darkness closes in more, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Sing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in more, still I will sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name.